everybody, Gigraptor here again with another episode of the Victoria 2 series. So, where we left off, we had conquered this little place here. Uh, America had basically taken our land and we were only allowed them as a puppet. And we are in financial <laughs> trouble. So, we're going to see if we can resolve that in some sort of way. First of all, so... I never noticed this. That's probably what the problem was. You can now afford to raise other things. Right then. I think that should be the finance sorted out. Hmm. Also, thinking more about where we're going to annex next in our crazy are crazy like scrabbling for land. First of all, we're probably going to grab San Tomas because it's held by Denmark and Denmark can't really do much about it. First of all, we're going to let our infamy sort of drop down a bit. Because the last thing we want is the Americans or someone coming in and like whacking us to death. That's it, Lagano, which is where we got. So, I don't know. Um, another place we could potentially conquer is Johor which supposedly has a lot of gold yep, precious metal plenty of dosh there whereas over here we have basically got some iron some fruit and some more iron it appears and some timber great, the mafia well I guess the Haitians will be sleeping with the fishes tonight then it's probably Probably a good idea to start developing a military at home because the last thing we want is some sort of uprising coming along and kicking us out of power. Although, now I think about it more, maybe that isn't such a bad thing. Hmm. Well, I imagine our profit margins are going to drop now, but there'll be more reform. Which is always a good thing. Or not. I'm surprised by that. Conservatives changed? Bloody hell. What's going on here? <laughs> Stop encouraging intellectuals, I think, and start encouraging capitalists instead to develop our economy. And it makes absolutely no change whatsoever to the way our literacy is developing, so that's not so bad. Military is just going to see here. Probably gonna annex Congo next. Actually, now I think about it, because it's quite close, so it'll be easy to annex. Hmm. I'm not sure if we'll be able to beat Portugal to it first, and we have to wait for our rebel factions. I'm not sure when the Geneva Convention comes along, but that would be quite useful. Even though it only re reduces us by one infamy, it would be quite a useful thing to have. So. So now we've waited a wee bit of time. Let's see how many capitalists we've got. Um, seven. Great, fantastic. Uh, let's see. Ooh. So, when do we leave Syria? No, we're not a secondary power. So I don't think we're ever going to be a secondary power unless we capture Johor pretty quickly and since we don't have really much in the way of potential of building up a reasonable navy I'm not sure that will happen anytime soon. Especially considering we have this little problem of infamy. Especially considering it seems to be on the rise. So I think we're probably going to go for Johor, or, or alternatively we could establish a foothold on the American continent itself, and maybe conquer Panama or something, or Costa Rica or whatever the hell it is, maybe build the Panama Canal, that would certainly increase the prestige. 
You thought maybe. Wait, have we got? Yeah, we do have enlightenment. No, we have classicism. All that, so we should be contributing to our prestige gain, which is obviously a good thing. Now, I don't particularly like being 60th, as you can quite imagine. Hopefully, we can change that though at some point with our annexations of nasty, horrible other peoples, like like these Congo, like this Congo, for example, sitting there in their mud huts, probably. We'll just give them slightly better mud huts. Right, now that's done. What shall we do next? Maybe... No real need for a railroad. Steel production could improve the iron. Well, I doubt that would be really uh, useful. I think the Prosnosonia fort would probably be a good idea. Just to have this sort of naval base that you know might be quite useful as you can probably imagine you know just a hunch but it might be useful let's see let's see how many percent oh no we don't have any oh wait we can't change from protector anyway because we're not we don't have colonial power because we're not secondary power yet or anything so we're screwed there I thought the Yanks were our allies. <laughs> Minus 1001. Glorious. Hmm. What else could we conquer? If we could get to Haiti, um, Haiti? Hawaii even? Before the Americans do, we could conquer that. Well, there's the only really real, real reason to conquer it. The Hawaii, Hawaiian, Hawaiian Islands. Huh, never would have guessed. I wasn't aware Midway wasn't wasn't uncol was uncolonized at this point, but I suppose now I know. Don't you just love having your army at half strengths sitting somewhere where they can't escape? Fun, of course. How could you want anything else, ever? What else could we do? We're getting slight population growth, I think. So the Haitian Congo, I never thought I'd read that, actually contributes like about a third of our population, which is quite good. But what we really need is sort of unity of religion, in a way, I think. Because without that, it con it I think it makes issues because it's not part of the accepted culture or something, I'm not sure. From what I know. Uh, so it could do something pretty horrendous to solve that, although honestly I'm not sure I'll think about it. If you if you put in the comments whether you think maybe it's worth culturally appropriating the the you know, the colonials over here. Like I'm not sure whether I should or I shouldn't. Because you know, they're quite a lot of people, and also I'm not sure if it's worth it. And obviously, it's a horrendous thing to do going <laughs> massacring people. Uh, let's see, safety regulation. Puh. Uh, let's see. Yay, furniture. I'll definitely help. You know what? Sod what I've said. I think I'm probably going to encourage a revolution. We're going to be a communist country. Haiti. The, the HSSSR. SSR, even. All alone. I thought Mossy might have surrendered by now. Mossy, Mossy, Mossy. Everyone's hostile to them. <laughs> is that because they're hostile to me? Probably. Total population of 2 million. Fantastic, we can compete with Luxembourg. 
I think everyone's hostile to me though. I'm protected by the Yanks, so we don't have to worry. No one's gonna fuck with the Yanks. Well, at least we're converting them to Catholic. See, look. Oh, wait. <laughs> For a minute there, I thought the Catholics had taken over or something. 100% Catholic. 12% Catholic. Actually, it'd be interesting to see how many Haitian people there are actually in the Haitian Congo. Uh, zero, it would seem. That's what we're going to do. We're going to get another national focus so we can move people to our colony. Because that's obviously a useful thing to have because you can't have the natives running your colony. Because that never runs, that never ends well. If you've only got the. If you're sort of being commanding them from Haiti when they're in West Africa, wouldn't end too well, I don't think. Let's see how many capitalists we have actually. Ooh. Uh, right. Where is our. I think it's. Ideological fault. That's it. So we're going to research that so we can get another national focus and encourage immigration. So. Next thing I think we're going to do when we get our, our next opportunity is probably improve the voting system. Probably to proportional representation. From what I think. Hmm. Capitalists. Oh, look at the Haitian corner though. 62 capitalists. Hooray. <laughs> They're so poor they can't fund the cement factory. <laughs> Maybe I should stop taxing the rich so much. Doesn't make any difference anyway. Oh, I'm tempted. But I'm not going to get any of their... Bloody hell. I don't remember Paraguay being that big. Maybe they even threaten Brazil at this point. Like, if they were to just annex the, the bits around them. And make a strong force in South America. Perhaps a potential issue later on down the line. Wait, Sweden has islands in the West Indies? You know, I'm not even sure why I'm even surprised by that. Like, it seems like every country in Europe has a, just this little island in the middle of the middle of the Caribbean Sea. But I mean, Spain has got one. Britain's got tons. Well, actually, Spain's got two. And then you've got like France and all of that. Seems seems a little bit silly, really. But I suppose it really makes sense when you think about it, considering who got there first. It would appear that. America has manifested their destiny. I think these are the current borders, I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks that way. Let's see what Britain's colonising. Um. Mm. punishment is reducing it. <laughs> how can you how can you make someone unconscious by threatening them with death? I mean you can stop them from talking but really come on we need to get rid of this dictatorship. Actually, we do need rich strata income so we can start funding the cement factories and the salt mines, of course. Even if it does put a hole in our finances. Seems the dosh is rolling in. Just what we want, of course. See how many capitalists we have now. It's important to have capitalists, as you can imagine. 106. Sod it, they're not doing their job. They can fund the rest. 
Yay, machine parts. Now we will have a cement factory in Haiti, next to the salt mine and the, and the tobacco plantations. Who knows, it's, it's almost like we're starting to look like a banana republic here. Crikey, who would have guessed? Uh, let's see, can we actually build factories? No, we can't in our protectorate. Sort of sucks that, really. You know, we are getting timber. And then let's have a look at trade to see who's exporting the most tobacco now. Yep, we're still fourth. But Britain's making the most, which sort of sucks. Hmm. Yeah, I think we're going to annex Johor when we get a chance. So basically, when this infamy here is going to be about, say, 13, 14. Because the last thing we want is a bunch of people declaring war on us because we've declared war on Johor. Especially considering this bordering parts of the United Kingdom. And the last thing we want is the UK getting involved because we just won't last. We will die. Ah, uh, that's great. Um, there's lots of disease events I've noticed. Not many earthquake ones though, surprisingly. But should I really be surprised? It's a poor country. 1% intellectuals, 90% farmers. I think we're going to need to do something about that. Um, let me think. What do artisans do? They build shit, probably. Hmm. We're probably going to have to do something, because we can't allow just farmers. While it does produce a lot from our RGOs, obviously, we need to come up with a better way of doing it. So, we need people to work in the factories, basically. So, I think artisans work in them. Um... You know, I'm not sure why we decided to build a cement factory, really, considering we don't actually own any coal, I don't think, or anything that would even make cements. So, that's a bit of an issue, but at least we have a factory, so we can increase our industrial power, which, well, is pretty important. Excuse me, I'm going to be back in a second. I'm back, peoples, and I've switched off that music because it was annoying, and hopefully won't give me a copyright strike. So, what now? Yay, people are dying. Obviously what we want. <laughs> There's more Bangkong Bakongos than there are actually Carabino, so we have to sort something out there, I think. A lot of farmers. Yeah, actually, sod it. I'm gonna think I'm gonna find a. Nah, actually, maybe not. Hey, our infamy is re reduced. Hooray! Not sure quite what happened, but something happened. So we're going to go to war with Johor, I think. Let them hold their little rally. Of course. Let's see how much wood. Seven point five. Yeah, I think we're gonna give them a little bit more time. Socialists in the Netherlands. Rebellion in France. Seems our population is taking a nosedive. Maybe I should have tried playing Haiti before this, because it seems like there's an intensity population for some reason. No, wait till there's a drop. There we go. Let's see why. Natural growth. That's not a very good reason. Probably dying a plague or something, and the game's just not telling me, which sucks. Oh well. 
It's not like the people who are dying are that important. You know, I have a nasty feeling there's going to just not be enough people to do anything by the end of this. Because I've so notoriously screwed Haiti. For whatever reason. But hey, it's a difficult nation to play. And I'm pretty certain it says that on the on the forums. So, no, on the forums on the wiki as well. And I think it's especially so in this mod because it's even weaker. Yay, we have Austria-Hungary. Hopefully we can get rid of these Ottoman scum soon as well. Are they... They're not even secondary power anymore. Don't know why, but the Ottoman Empire just always seems to weaken so quickly in this game. And I'm not sure that happens so much That happens so much in real life. Because, like, the Ottoman Empire was massive. No, I'm not, I'm not denying that it was on the... It was on the fall, but... It wasn't... I don't think... It, I think it's still considered a reasonable power. I mean, they managed to hold off the allies of Gallipoli, which would require a certain amount of power. Sod off, I've got another another one, haven't I? Um, why not, Romanticism? Oh, I see, we don't have enough people to actually get national focus. Well, I feel retarded now. Hmm. Colonial exploitation. Sounds like a great idea. Yay. So, capitalists still. We've actually gone up the rankings a little. Which I find surprising. What else? We've got rebels. Suffrage movement. <laughs> I wish there was elections. But I suppose we're just going to have to roll them up a little bit to do that. Yeah, I think we're going to switch back to. Oh, wait, we can go commie. Yay. That's obviously useful. Um, let's see. Fourteen-hour workday. My God, these guys are really having like they're really being asked kissed by the government here, aren't they? Fourteen hours. What? They're not even fulfilling their twenty-two-hour quota. God, how do you, how do you think our country's supposed to stay stable, especially after all of that? Cool. I love how I'm encouraging capitalists. Yeah, I've got a socialist government now in control. Such a genius, obviously. I don't want farmers or craftsmen. I don't know. Uh, yeah, intellectuals. Intellectuals are always left wing. Unless they're on Fox News, of course. Honestly, I don't know where they find a lot of the people on Fox News where they've just like they've probably got like a, a doctorate in communications at the University of like I don't know some are crap, but it's like and then they spew all this retarded shit like oh video games harm people's minds or something. It's ridiculous. Like I'm playing this right now and I don't think it's particularly harming my mind in any way, shape or form. Probably someone disagrees with me in the comments, but it isn't uh, to me. But then there's like the Anita Sarkeesian school of thought that says, "Oh, the more you you think you're being affected, the more, the less you think you're being affected, the more you are actually being affected." Which, I, if I'm honest, I don't think that makes any sense whatsoever. Because it's just retarded. Like, think about it. Like, if you don't think you are being affected by something, like, like. If soldiers don't think they're being affected by PTSD, I don't like. They might still be being affected by PTSD, but I don't think it makes any difference if they think they are or if they think they're not. So, it just sounds like a bit of a retarded argument from Sarkeesian, as always. But what am I supposed to say? I'm just a pleb on the internet. So let's see what we need: small arms and canned food. I don't think canned food existed at this point, but 
I don't know. We need our we need our infantry division. Hmm. Small arms. Small arms. Yeah, I think we might actually have elections soon. Maybe the socialists actually put them in place. I don't know, but there's a lot of socialist governments that claim they're de democratic when they actually aren't. So what am I supposed to say? Come on. Yes. There we go. So now, we, while we're there isn't quite universal suffrage, there is suffrage of some form. Which is always a good thing, and seems to have jumped us up the... Actually, I think that might have just been the prestige we just accepted, that jumped us up the rankings. But are we more... Let's see. Held an election. Great. Heck, we even have soldiers now. My god. We can take control of our own countries. Let's see what the people want. 28th. Seems like stuff's actually going well. Now, comparatively. We've still got a 3.8% literacy rate, but for <laughs> that matter. Come on, mate. Um, are people still dying? No, they're not. That's great. Sporting a lot of timber, though. No, I think we bought a reasonably wise time because they're quite cheap. These small arms. Let's see. Um, tobacco. My back has been there. You know, you'd have thought, considering we've got control of a sub-Saharan African state, we might be exporting tropical wood instead of just timber. But I'm not really sure. I'm not sure. I don't. I, it's just I don't. When I think of Africa, and I see photos like this, I don't really think of coniferous trees or deciduous, deciduous trees, or however you pronounce it. You know. Oh, atheism. Hooray. <laughs> well, the few people have spoken. I think we've probably got about three votes overall. So there's like two against one or something. No, three, just three in favour. Let's see. How many... Pure? So 214 capitalists and six, uh, 2,679. So less than 3,000 votes overall. Because I don't think many of these are landed. You mean... Yeah, let's see. How's it going? Are we actually getting immigrants here? probably encourage immigrants because we're now a democracy. Which is always a good thing because that seems to encourage immigration a lot more than something like say a dictatorship because I don't think when most people move to a country they want to be bossed around quite so much because a lot of the f a lot of the people fleeing are fleeing oppression so like I don't know say Syria for example with Al-Assad in control, like, non's... I don't think he's particularly democratic from what I've heard, but what am I supposed to say? I'm not on the ground, because it's never just... it's never as simple as good guys and bad guys. So, like, the Free Syrian Army apparently have committed atrocities, like... as have... as have the Syrian... just the regular Syrian Al-Assad people, or whatever they're called. <laughs> Not, I'm not particularly knowledgeable on this, it's something to talk about. Yeah, so... There's never there's never just a good side in war. Is what I'm trying to say. Although I'm not saying it in a particularly eloquent manner, I don't think. And you've always got to remember that, because... While people might stand for freedom and all of that... The ends don't always means don't just always justify the ends maybe and in a lot of cases it doesn't end up happening so one example that springs to mind is the October Revolution and result in Russian Civil War because Lenin and the Bolsheviks were fighting for socialism and all of that and supposed f freedom of the proletariat although in the end I don't think I can 
really say that that really happened especially considering what happened with Stalin and Khrushchev, Brezhnev and all of that afterwards because it, like, if you're gonna, you can't deny that there was a class system even though Marxist ideology sought to sort of remove that and make it just one class although and that's that's one of the ways that the sort of good ideas can be warped I suppose although don't get me wrong Lenin wasn't a great guy either setting up things like the Cheka and massacring the Russian royal family for example but then again that was to stop the reactionary whites getting to him but you know scummy thing to do a bit really if you ask me but so there's never really any good sides in war I don't think I think it's, that's sort of true in the Second World War as well because like, like the Nazis might have done horrible things but that implies that the Allies and the Soviets didn't do horrible things as well because especially if you if like the gulags and all of that that the Soviets set up where they, where they send prisoners very much to die in the coldness of Siberia like I think something like 5% of the German, Romanian, and just general Axis prisoners captured by the Soviets actually returned back to their home countries after the Second World War, after being captured. And obviously, I don't, I don't think I need to speak much for the Axis. Obviously, with, with such horrendous things as the Holocaust and the Raven and King, things like that. I'm trying to think of an example now where. America and the Allies did it because comparatively with the Eastern Front, I think the Western Front was a lot more civil. I'm, I'm, I mean, there's obviously exceptions to the rule, like when the SS massacred a lot of British prisoners who were captured after D-Day or something, from what I read. And as a result, I think it was accompanying brigades or regiments to this, where these people had been massacred. They just took no prisoners of German soldiers ever because of what happened. Uh, I don't know. Let's, let's see. Oh wait, of course I can't select it because it's a democracy. What did I expect? Let's see. Have we actually got any sort of immigrants? Yeah, because I'd have expected some. Appears not. That'd be quite useful having some immigrants, you know. One officer. Mm. One officer. <laughs> One officer. Mm. I think we're going to need more than one officer for 15,000 soldiers somehow. Just a hunch. Yeah, Romania exists. So I think we're going to play until 1866, and I'm going to call it a day because honestly, there's a lot of noise going on in the background from working here, and I don't want any more interruptions than I've already gotten. As well as the the other episode taking far, far too long, like 56 minutes and eight seconds, I think it was, and that's obviously not a good thing. So I'm going to try and call it something. So call it a day. So in the next episode, so nothing much has really happened here. I think what we're going to do, actually, now I think about it, well, we're surrounded by Britain, so we don't want to piss off too much, we're going to demand concession, hmm. Japan's being formed, so we're going to conquer our concession here, and hopefully capitalise on the precious metals and golds coming out of Japan. Let's see if they've got any nasty allies. So basically, they've fought, they've got insignificant allies. We're going to rebuild our navy. Clipper convoys, of course. We're gonna. That order do it. And there goes the economy. Funny how something like that can just cripple the economy very quickly. I find.
So it'll be like, prepare the fleet, and we'll just waltz in there and capture it. Or, if, or at least that's what I expect, I expect to happen. Or at least that's what I hope I am. You know what? Yeah, I think I'm going to call it a episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. This was Giga Raptors Victoria 2 Let's Play of Haiti. And I'll see you later on the next episode. Goodbye.